Hello, and welcome to today's video where I'll be covering my webcomic process in Clip Studio Paint. In the previous video, I went over how I draw the line art for my comic pages. Today I'll be discussing my coloring process. Links to additional tutorials and information for everything mentioned in today's video will be down in the description. Before ever coloring any pages, I recommend making color swatches for all your main characters. This way you'll have colors you can easily pull from without having to pull up character references every time you want to color a page. Color swatches are these little colored tiles you can pick from here in the color set panel. These swatch tiles can be named and rearranged for easy organization, which makes them really useful for comics. To make a swatch, pick a color from your canvas using the eyedropper tool, then click the add color button at the bottom of the color set panel to create it. You can change the name of a color by right clicking and selecting change color name. I set mine to display as a list by going to View, List, Medium, but you can display your swatches however you find most comfortable. Now we can move on to coloring our page. The first step is to create a new layer underneath your line art layer. I tend to make several layers for different objects, and I always keep my character's colors separate from the background so I can adjust them to match each other later. Clip Studio Paint comes with various tools for easy color filling. My personal favorite is the Lasso Fill found under the Direct Draw subset in the Figure Tools set. Just draw a circle around whatever you want to color, and it'll automatically fill it in for you. It's a lot faster than manually filling things in with a paint bucket. The Paint Unfilled Area tool under the Fill Tool set can be helpful for going back and filling any little white gaps left behind by the Lasso Fill tool. If you find it difficult to fill in your line art without it bleeding outside the lines, then you may find it helpful to switch your line art layer to a reference layer in the Layers panel. A reference layer is a type of layer that forces the other layers around it to only work within it. So if a tool is set to reference the reference layer, it can't fill outside of it. As you can see here, the color stops at the edge of the lines because my lines are set as the reference. You can set any color fill tools to work within the reference layer under their settings. With that done, I can start coloring and shading. When all your lines have been filled in with color, you may decide they could use some adjusting. In that case, you can use Clip Studio Paint's adjustment layers to manipulate the colors into something new. To make an adjustment layer, go to Layer, New Correction Layer, and choose one of the options there. Each adjustment layer type is useful for different things. My favorite for making my colors more harmonious is the Gradient Map layer. Applying a gradient map to your colors will bind a chosen gradient to the values of your existing colors. After picking a gradient, you can change the layer mode and opacity of the adjustment layer until it gives you a result you like. I prefer gradient maps over other forms of adjustment because it ties everything together pretty nicely and can give me some unexpected results that go beyond what I might have chosen on my own. The final step of my coloring process is to color in my line art. This isn't necessary for every comic, but I think it helps to make my work look more three-dimensional. To do this, I make a new layer on top of my line art layer and set it as a clipping mask in the layers panel. This will prevent any colors I draw from going outside of where my line art is drawn. After I lay down the colors, I use the opacity slider to adjust them until they look just right. And with that, my colors are complete. Those are the basics for how I do my coloring process. In the next episode, I'll be going over my process for making comic materials, including some tips for creating brushes, textures, and reusable assets. Check the description below for my social media links and more tutorials. Thanks for watching, and I hope to see you next time.